So good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we are going to begin outside, uh, and I'll explain why once we get out there. Hey, Fredo. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, but um, if you need a coat, like it's not super cold, but if you need a coat, grab a coat. We're not going to be out there for three hours, I promise. But we'll start. We'll start. Grab a candle, and then we're going to head outside. Yeah. So we begin outside with this fire because God created the whole universe and he created this fire as well uh, and so that we can be part of his creation. I just want to, before we begin tonight, I just want to uh, welcome all of our visitor, visitors tonight. We have a very special occasion. We've got four sisters being baptized and so uh, welcome to them, their entire family and their sponsors as well. Thanks for coming. And we'll say congratulations when the, if they actually survive the baptism, too. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters, scattered throughout the world, to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. We have um, the weird thing I get to do is we, you don't normally do when you have a fire outside. Normally you just sit and drink beer, right? <laughs> I get to bless the fire tonight, so that's a, a different thing. So next time you're drinking beer around a fire, you can bless it too. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal Easter celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We light from this new Easter fire the Easter candle, the Paschal candle, the Jesus candle, it's often called. And uh, there's lots of symbolism involved in it. And. Um, Part of the symbolism we see on the candle here is the A, and this is the Greek letter omega, so it means that Christ is the beginning and the end. And so there's a prayer we pray, Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. And then on Good Friday, uh, Jesus was given five wounds. And so we place these here uh, in the candle to remind us of the five wounds of Jesus. That the wounds that any of us receive will always be transformed. Uh, sorry, there's only four. Never mind. But, you know, close. I was close. Uh, that any wounds that we receive um, will be transformed by Christ's resurrection, that nothing 
with Christ can hurt us. So, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. At this time, we have the, the light of Christ chant, and so I'll get you all. Uh, Herb is going to start lighting other people's candles there, and you can come in and light your candle from the, the fire too if you like, uh, so that once all your candles are lit, you guys can follow me in indoors. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. And you can come in and uh, take your pew. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. I'll invite you to be seated for the Easter proclamation. If you're trying to follow the service, there should be what's called the Sunday Missal in your pews, and you can follow along in there. The service tonight is called the Easter Vigil, so you'll... Uh, you'll find it in there. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. 
Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father and pouring out his own, his own dear blood, wipe clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that, when a, that a, with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin, this is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer, the sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. At this time, you may extinguish your candles as we prepare to listen to the scripture readings tonight. First reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth and across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, 
the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You set the earth on its foundations so that it will never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use to bring forth food from the earth. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Please stand and let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The third reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but you lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. 
the children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptian pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, and not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, and so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. <clears throat> The Lord is a warrior, and Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them, and they went down into the depths like a stone. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. <clears throat> Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in You brought your people in and planted them on the mountains of your own possessions. The place, O Lord, that you made your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered <clears throat> Please stand and let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now 
you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The fifth reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, that you might live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, my steadfast sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way, and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord, that he might have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust. I will not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. With joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. Be great, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people 
for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The seventh reading, a reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil. They defiled it with their ways and with their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name. In that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of this land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, to which they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for you. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, and with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for you, O God. Who send out your light and your truth, let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain and to your dwelling. As a deer longs for flowing streams, my soul longs for you, O God. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. As a deer for flowing streams, my soul longs for you, O God. Let us pray. O God, 
unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up. What had become old is made new and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, now let us rejoice and sing together the glory to God. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 
we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women who had accompanied Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then the women remembered Jesus' words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. These words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Happy Easter! Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. You, my friends, this is the night. This is the night that we have been waiting for. Why do we meet at night? Like, you guys are crazy to come out at, what's it, 10, 10 o'clock on a... Because Christ meets us in the darkness. That everything, the greatest thing that God has done for us is not just when we're having a good day, but when we're having the darkest of days. And then he lights this little flame in our lives and lets us know we're not alone. But you know, I don't know if you guys, I, I can see it. It's amazing being up here, you guys. You should be a priest someday. When you guys came in with your candles, like it's just, it lights up the night. Hey, it's beautiful. And even outside when you're standing out there, even with your candles lit, when we're together, 
we amplify Christ's light. When we come together to pray, when we stick together, and so this is the meaning of our faith then. And this is why we have these four baptisms tonight, because uh, we need to experience the longest Mass, because if our newly baptized can make it through this Mass, they can make it through any faith challenges in their life. But if you think this Mass tonight is long, uh, Jason and Peyton and Raina went to the Chrism Mass with the bishop, and that was about two hours long, right? So they survived that one. So tonight's like nothing. Tonight's just like child's play, hey? So I was talking to, we've got some kids as well in Zenon Park. They are preparing for their first communion, hey, little kids. And so I was at, talking to them about Easter, right? And what the real meaning of, of Easter is, where it comes from. And the kids, they're smart. They got all the right answers and then one of the kids says, well, wait, what's that got anything to do with Easter eggs? I was like, okay, there, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Hey, now we're, right? So we even got Easter eggs up in our decor here. Easter eggs are very Christian. So I'm pretty smart, so I thought I can explain it to the kids, Say, hey? Let me try this one. So I said, well, Easter, either the eggs are to do with new life, right? Like, just like a chicken hatches from the eggs, it's new life. Jesus is new life. He's risen at Easter, right? Um, you know, then an egg is empty, right? After the shell is empty once the chicken hatches, just like the empty tomb, you know? And uh, then one of the parents even thought, oh, they're going to help me out because the kids might not quite get that, right? And so they said, well, even the, the image of an egg is the image of our Trinity, hey? God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just like an egg is the shell, the white, and the yolk. thought that was pretty good, hey? It made me think then of why do we even have these Easter eggs, right? You know, in the kids, they go on these Easter egg hunts, and so you hide them around the house, and all the kids are looking for all these Easter eggs, can you find what you're looking for? Do you find maybe an egg that you hid three years ago? <laughs> Do the kids get angry when they don't find right away what they want? How confusing it must have been Easter morning for the women that we just heard about in the gospel tonight. They came to the tomb and they could not find what they were looking for. They were looking for Jesus, and they couldn't even find his dead body. They were already sad, you guys. We just had Good Friday yesterday, and they were sad over the death of their friend and Lord, and now his body was gone too. Do we feel sometimes like we've been searching for God all over, and we just can't find him? Do we feel sometimes lost and abandoned? Maybe we feel like our Lent has been 40 years long instead of 40 days. So Easter reminds us that one thing is clear, you guys, that this is the night. This is the night unlike any other, where Christ puts an end to sin and death. God has chosen us to be his people, and that if we accept this gift of his life and salvation, although we die, we will live forever. And so our Pope, Pope Francis, has begun this past year a process called a synod, which means a gathering, a meeting, a synod of not just, you know, the, the top dudes in the church, but of each one of us who is Christian, a time, time of listening, of gathering together, and a synod means as well of journeying together. Because he knows that if we don't walk together, if we don't gather together and journey together, if we're alone, we get lost. We're like that forgotten Easter egg. But when we rely on each other, 
when we hold our candles next to each other and light up each other's lives, when we rely on our community of faith, but most of all our God, that no matter how alone and abandoned we feel, God will appear when we need him the most. And so, yes, it's a long night. We hear seven readings, psalms, songs today, because this is our faith story. It's like sitting around the campfire again, listening to Grandpa tell stories. It reminds us that God has never abandoned our families. It reminds us that God has never abandoned his church. This is why we believe, because we have had miracles in our lives. This is why we spent 40 days with Jesus in the desert, giving up chocolate, I hope, right? We were fasting, we were praying more, and we were giving alms. Because these things open our eyes to God's miracles in the world. So did we have a good Lent? A fruitful Lent? Did we see God's miracles? So, in a few moments, we're going to bless these Easter waters, and we're going to have some baptisms. This is to remind us of the strength and wisdom that we receive from God at our own baptisms. Then, we're going to pray the Synod prayer yet again. <laughs> One of the lines that struck me that you're going to hear again from this, this prayer that we're going to pray is, may we find in God our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. My friends, Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. He has conquered sin and death. May he now reign in your hearts, now and forever. I'll invite you just to remain seated. My blessings can work through metal, but I'm still going to take this off. <laughs> Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in this, the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water, would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, 
upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled also upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. At this time, I'm going to ask not just our baptismal candidates, but all of us to renew all of our baptismal promises. Uh, so please stand. And just a reminder, the response is, I do. So, dear brothers and sisters, through this Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask each of you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. At this time, we're going to be having the baptism itself, and then after the baptism, I will bless the rest of the congregation with the Easter waters, the newly blessed Easter waters. So at this time, I'm going to ask the ladies to come forward to stand right on that top step there. I'll get all four of you, yeah. And then I'll get the, uh, their sponsors and their parents as well. And so I ask you girls one final time, and yeah, one final time, I'll ask you all together, is it your will that you be baptized in the faith of this church, which we have all just professed with you. Yes. Perfect, that's the right answer. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get the three of you just to step to the side just quickly. And we're gonna start with uh, Peyton, and I will get 
Is it Wilma? Is you okay? I'll get you to stand right beside her. Biggest towels we could find. You're gonna need a big towel here. Oh, sorry. Ready? All right, Peyton, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Good job. I'll get you to step to the side, and Callie, and Fridell. And Callie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son. I warn them. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Maddie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Raina, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'm yeah. Okay, we're not going to congratulate them yet because we're not done yet. So I'll get you girls to stand uh, back up to in the middle there. Uh, and then you'll know. Okay, so, uh, you'll notice that uh, the girls are all wearing uh, white tonight. Hey. White is the sign of the new life we receive in baptism. So, uh, Raina and Maddie and Callie and Peyton, you have all become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive these baptismal garments and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Godparents, um, the sponsors, and the parents. At this time, I'm going to get you uh, to light the candles. We'll go like this. Sorry. So if you want to take them out, and you can light it from our Easter candle. So this is a sign, of course, that our faith comes from God. It's a flame that gets lit. And sometimes when we go through stormy weather, our candles get blown out. So we need support from our parents, from godparents, from sponsors to keep our candle growing uh, lit brightly. So, so um, you have been enlightened by Christ newly baptized, walk always as children of the light, and keep the flame of faith 
alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, my dear newly baptized, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized, the promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on the four of you to strengthen you with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. And so, let us pray. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon our newly baptized, your daughters, to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so this next part we have is the confirmation. So it's the anointing with the oil of chrism that we got from the bishop as well. And so uh, whenever we anoint with sacred chrism, it means that they have been given a very special God, special job by God. And so the jobs that God gives us is to be priest, prophet, and king. And that's not just like I'm the only priest here, right? We're all priests. I'm just the one who gets paid to do it, right? <laughs> and we're, we're all pro we all have to be priests, which means we have to pray. We all have to be prophets, which means we have to teach the law. And we're all kings, because we're all given a little kingdom of people to take care of, okay? There's people in our lives that we're set to take care of. And so this chrism then anoints us with that, that job from God that we're, we're all given. Uh, oh, I forgot to read words. And so I'll say this to each of you just one at a time. And so Peyton, you read out first. So Peyton, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. Callie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And Maddie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And Reina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. The ne only next thing we have to do now is once we do communion, they're going to also receive tonight first communion, so communion for the first time. But that takes a couple more minutes to set everything up and to do those prayers. So until then, I'd like to congratulate them. And so if you'll join me in congratulating uh, them on their baptism and confirmation.
And so as we continue then this celebration, I'll invite you, you can blow out your candles now. And you can place them back in the box. Take them to your seats. And girls, you can, you can have a seat. Wonderful job. I can take the hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you should leave now. Oh, right, yes. And before we do the, um, the, pr the prayers of the faithful, though, I have the blessing of holy water for everybody. And please stand again as we bring our prayers and petitions towards our loving Father. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, a sign of God's covenant with the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people in need of repentance, forgiveness, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those in our community who yearn for the spirit of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the new members of our community who have received the sacraments this Easter, we pray to the Lord. Lord and the prayer for the Synod. We stand before you, Holy, Holy spirit, spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn is number 161 in Breaking Bread. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia, our triumphant holy day, alleluia, who did once upon the cross 
Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for this glory of his name. Our Lord, and of God's blessed church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the, the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And if you're following along in your books, I'll be using prayer number one. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. We pray especially uh, for Reina, for Callie, for Maddie, and for Peyton, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, 
we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by their protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of their, all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to, bl to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servant and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to the altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. So we pray especially for any of our family members or anybody we, that, who has died that we miss especially at this Easter time of year. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ, our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, 
You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And with a handshake or a hug, however you want to do it, let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Sorry, it's, it's, for communion this evening, uh, I, I ask if our first communicants will go first uh, and just give us a couple seconds because uh, I'm going to let them receive the blood of Christ um, as well. And no, that doesn't mean it's coming back in the church quite yet, but they're all sisters so they can drink from the same cup. It's not a big deal. Um, and then after that, everybody else who would like to receive communion can come forward. And if you don't receive communion, you can still come forward and you can place your arms like this and I can give you a blessing. Our communion hymn number 156, Breaking Bread.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to, before we conclude, say a huge thanks to everybody who made tonight possible, and not just tonight, but our Thursday Last Supper service, our Good Friday service yesterday. So Bob and Marianne, who did the singing, and all those, uh, the readers and everybody who helped out. Uh, it was a beautiful three days. Thank you guys so very much, and a wonderful way to conclude tonight. So thank you. And just a, a thank you to our girls for, for sticking it out with me for a whole year, uh, learning about our faith and deciding to get baptized, confirmed, and even to receive First Communion. Um, and then, as well, not only is it a beautiful night for them, but it's Peyton's birthday today, too. So she got to celebrate with her girls uh, earlier today and now got, gets to celebrate by herself, which is probably almost as good. So, uh, happy birthday, Peyton. Um, and do not leave tonight without, I, uh, without getting chocolates. I've got a whole bunch of Easter chocolates, and you don't even have to search for them like you search for God. <laughs> I promise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow down for the Easter blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Good job. Number 171, we're going to sing verses 1 